This is the new DJI Avada, a smart FPV drone that was released with their brand new Goggles 2 as well as a super beginner friendly motion controller. I also picked up the Fly More kit for some more batteries and of course the FPV remote controller too so I can properly test it all out. I dropped nearly $2,000 on this setup all said and done in hopes I can eventually capture some incredible FPV footage like we've been seeing from some other YouTubers like Matty Hapoya. So today, let's find out everything about the DJI Avada system, the build quality, how well does it fly, and how the footage looks. Let's start with the build. The Avada itself is really well built with integrated propeller guards and a roll cage around the camera and battery. This drone can definitely take some hits and be ready for another flight. This style of drone most resembles a Cinewhoop drone and like Cinewhoops, they are designed for both indoor and outdoor flight and are meant to capture stable and smoother footage when compared to a freestyle FPV drone. The camera utilizes a 48 megapixel 1 over 1.7 inch CMOS sensor utilizing a wide angle 155 degree field of view lens that's equivalent to a 12.7 millimeter focal length. It can shoot in 4K up to 60 frames per second, 2.7K up to 120 frames per second, and 1080p up to 120 frames per second. And of course, the camera has a single axis gimbal that stabilizes the tilt axis with a fixed roll axis to allow for that FPV control and look. You also have the option of utilizing their electronic image stabilization called Rocksteady, which honestly provides some incredible image stabilization, or their Horizon Steady mode, which electronically locks the horizon to be level. You can also turn off stabilization and use the internal gyro data and stabilize it in post-production with programs like GyroFlow. The batteries you'll be using are these 2400 milliamp lithium ion DJI intelligent flight batteries, which from my experience provide 12 to 18 minutes of flight time, which in the regular drone world isn't all that impressive, but for an FPV drone is actually quite a long flight time. Now, let's talk about the flight operation of this drone. The reason why this is a smart FPV drone and not just a regular FPV drone is that it has manual flight mode and GPS flight mode. GPS flight mode is what we're used to with standard DJI drones. You can fly it up, hover, and let go of the controller and you're good to go. You press forward and it goes forward, you let go and it stops. Manual mode on the other hand, well, it's full manual, so I would not recommend letting go of the controller and just walking away if you're in mid-flight, because it's gonna fall. In GPS mode, you have a normal mode and a sport mode, the only difference being the speed limit of the drone. In normal mode, the max speed the Avada is intended to reach is 8 meters per second, or about 18 miles per hour. In sport mode, the max speed is 14 meters per second, or about 31 miles per hour. And if you switch the Avada over to manual control, at full throttle, the advertised max speed is 27 meters per second, or about 60 miles per hour. Now, the bundle that you can get with the DJI Avada only comes configurable with the motion controller. This is a new take on how to fly an FPV drone, and it's extremely beginner friendly. You basically rotate your wrist to turn left or right, and you tilt your wrist up or down to tilt the camera up or down. And as you tilt your wrist in the goggles view, you'll see a white circle which indicates where you're flying towards. There's a throttle trigger to increase acceleration, a giant brake button to halt the Avada and make it hover where it is, as well as a record button that's easily accessible. I can't stress enough just how beginner friendly this controller is. I had never flown an FPV drone in my life and I was able to whip it around like it was no one's business. But I didn't want myself to be the only test subject so I handed it to my wife and a few friends and they haven't even had any experience flying any drones ever and they had a great time. Nice. <laughs> nice, good job. So how do you feel about it? Flying it, is it easy, difficult? It's. I mean, it's pretty intuitive, like, it's pretty easy. It's very easy. <laughs> it's easier than any VR game I've ever played. Combine that with the new DJI Goggles 2 with its 1080p video transmission, I don't think flying FPV has ever been so accessible. It has a super strong signal strength with an advertised max transmission range of 10 kilometers, around six miles. When you combine this and the motion controller, you've got yourself an easy flying experience, and not just that, but a really fun flying experience. But there's one problem with the motion controller. You can't fly it in manual mode, which 
makes sense. It'd be pretty hard to make the same fine adjustments you would on joysticks as you could on a gyro-based motion controller. So that's why I picked up the FPV Remote Controller 2. It felt pretty familiar when flying in GPS mode, really not too much different than flying a DJI Mavic. But see, you can't do these sick dives that you see with FPV drones in GPS mode. For that, you'll need to fly manual because for those maneuvers, you need to cut the throttle completely. Okay, so I'm a complete noob when it comes to manual FPV flights, so unsurprisingly, I could barely get it to hover, and I just crashed it within a few seconds. Uh, <laughs> So I'm gonna put in some hours playing on a FPV simulator game before I try my next manual flight and I'll report back on that. So the final thing I wanna to talk to you about is the image quality and this is gonna be short and sweet. I will probably always shoot in 4K 60 frames per second because that's gonna give me the best balance between image quality and ability to do some 50% slow motion when I want to. The camera records at 150 megabits per second and honestly in d -like color profile when given enough light, this camera produces some really nice looking footage. Now, it's not going to be as detailed as the footage you would get out of a Mavic, but it's more than usable to cut into content that is going to be distributed online on platforms like YouTube or Instagram. I think as DJI continues to iterate on their FPV line of drones, the image quality will only continue to improve. But you know what drones in general aren't great at? recording sound, and the DJI Avada doesn't record any sound at all actually. So if you want to have a captivating sequence, you're gonna want a good soundtrack and sound effects. That's where the sponsor of today's video comes in, Epidemic Sound. Everything from my YouTube videos to my client work uses the incredible music that you can find from Epidemic Sound's enormous library. Whether that's something more orchestral for an epic score, to something more chill like lo-fi, or even some hype EDM tracks, they've got it all. And on top of that, I always add in some sound effects to enhance the sound design of my videos, like ambient audio of the wind rustling, or sound effects like a whoosh for a drone shot. My favorite part is that I always pick from the same genre or two, so now when I log into the homepage, it just gives me songs similar to the ones I've used before, so this process now just takes me a few minutes. I've even made a playlist for you guys to check out some of the music I use for my channel. Remember, when you add high quality music and sound effects to your videos, you're not just adding extra bells and whistles to your production quality, but rather you're building a world for your story to live in. If you're interested in checking out my playlist and get access to a massive library of music and sound effects for your videos, sign up for a 30 day free trial at Epidemic Sound using my link in the description. So here are my final thoughts. The DJI Avada might be the most fun I've had flying a drone. It's not gonna be for everyone, and if you're looking for those slower cinematic shots, especially for commercial work like real estate videography, or using it for surveying or inspecting, this wouldn't be the right drone. But this drone is, in my opinion, the best way to get into FPV drone flying. The smart features like the GPS mode make it a great tool to teach you about how to achieve those epic FPV shots while still having the safety net in the back of your mind in case the flight gets a little out of control. If you're interested in checking out the DJI Avada, the links are in the description down below. All right, that's it for this one. If you wanna know anything else about the DJI Avada, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll make a follow-up video to this one. If you're interested in learning about how to get your part 107 drone pilot license, check out this video I made on that topic. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.